Hey there fellow adult collectors, welcome back. David Eon here with another virtual catalog tour and today we're taking a look at the 1973 Ideal Toy Fair catalog. And this one's kind of a grail catalog. Yes, there is such a thing as grail Toy Fair catalogs. And the reason why this one is so important is because it reveals for the first time the Evil Knievel stunt cycle set which is one of the most iconic toys of the 70s. A toy I wanted as a child and never got. Thanks. But anyways, we're going to start going through the catalog and you've seen me do these tours before. I'll go page by page and I'll show you everything in it. And this particular catalog I do have to be careful with because the glue on the inside of the spine is given out. So many of the pages are loose. Despite that fact, this is still a very desirable catalog for collectors of toy catalogs because of the significance of Evil Knievel in this particular issue. Just like if you had the Toy Fair catalog from Mattel showing the very first Masters of the Universe or the catalog from Hasbro showing the very first G.I. Joe, very important to collectors. Introducing Evil Knievel action figures and accessories. And that's really what makes this, even in this condition, you can get a pretty penny for this. Unfortunately, also, many, and here we go, there's the stunt cycle and, uh, and the scramble van and the Evil Knievel original figures, and I'll close up on those for you. Unfortunately, there are many people who deliberately tear these catalogs apart and sell them page by page which is a practice that I really frown upon. The original stunt cycle that's what I, I wanted that's what every kid wanted believe me. <laughs> that was an incredible set for the 70s and of course over here you've got the scramble van which also you have the ability to jump over. And the first three Evil Knievel action figures on the card with the number one. And these are bendy figures. They're bendy figures. So you can twist them up to look like he just had a major accident. And if you know Evil Knievel's history, he had a lot of them. I used to have a lot of Evil Knievel stuff. I don't really have much anymore. Part of the collection I lost. Something that a lot of people have wanted me to do a video talking about. And I may do that at some point in the future. Just let you soak that in a little bit longer. Because this really is the highlight of the catalog. Is the stunt cycle set. And there's the original box. Very desirable toys now. Very desirable toys. The original ideal. Turn the page and we get right into Jolton Jump Set and the Racing Figure 8 Crash Course, which of course the idea was to try to crash your cars. And these look pretty cool too, actually. And again, you know, I never had one of these racing sets, one of these RC sets. I never really knew anyone that had one either. Class A racing. Always wondered about that. But I imagine they were fairly expensive sets. And these types of catalogs, these Toy Fair catalogs, they do not have prices. Look how big they make that one look. They make it look gigantic. That looks cool though. It looks like you could have a lot of fun with that. But yeah, there's no prices in these catalogs unless the dealer hand wrote them in. And I do have uh, a couple of catalogs that are like that. Where it was handwritten. Mighty Mo vehicles. They don't go fast, but they sure go long. 
the military jeep and dump truck. It says, true to life motor sound adds extra realism as they make their fun wherever they find it, indoors or out. And I guess there is a motor in these. See how they come packaged. Looks like you could put action figures in them. Skeeter's Lift and Loop Action Set. That is a, it says shown actual size. Those are small cars. Look at that. That's like a micro machine. I wonder if that's the inspiration for micro machines, actually. And it comes with that playset there. That's pretty neat. Run, run and stunt set, it says. And then over here, Skeeter's dual racing set. And it's got the little device, I guess you depress that and they fly off. Yeah, those are small. That is pre-micro machines, miniature racing cars. I do not remember these. I do not remember those. Shaker Maker Switchables, which is a modeling set. I guess you make a mix and you create these like plaster figures and paint them. And they have a Flintstones version also. So I'd be interested in the Flintstones version just for the box art. <laughs> Look at that. That's kind of neat, actually. The happy kid shaking the thing and there's your Flintstones characters. And uh looks like looks like looks like Wilma's breastfeeding pebbles there. <laughs> Maybe I'm being too presumptuous reading too much into that image. Shaker Maker. That sounds really familiar. Shaker Maker Harry Bunch. Wow, those are creepy looking. Actually, any close up on those. Does anybody remember Shaker Makers? Those are ugly. Well, you know, arts and crafts. And there's the box art for those. Disney Harry Bunch and Mighty Mouse. Is that Mighty Mouse or Mickey Mouse? I'm going to say Mighty Mouse. That's Mickey Mouse. I think the yellow shirt threw me off. Shaker Maker Fun Center. I know, the catalog is coming unglued. Poor thing. Most of the rest of my catalogs are in much better condition. This one just kind of gave up. Basic Toys, it says. Freebish, which is like a foam dart. Pre-nerf. You decide. And Wiffle Bats. You remember these? Do they still make Wiffle Bats with balls? I have no idea if they still do that. You know, kids don't play with toys anymore, so that, that stuff could be fading away. Twirly birds. Assorted twirly birds. Boaterific boat center. Boaterific shark pack boats. And rescue planes. I don't really remember these either. It looks like it operates on a zip line. I don't recall these either. But you know, you can't remember everything. You can't know and remember every toy that exists there. And I don't know what those helmets are supposed to be because I do not even see a listing for it. 
reading the uh, I'm reading the side panels as I go, and I don't see it unless it's on the next page. It doesn't look like it. I don't know why those helmets are even there. Basic toys, Monkeyville vehicles, puzzle plaques, and scarecrow target set. Monkeyville with little monkey action figures. Those are kind of neat. I like the box too. If I came across these, I would totally get them. <laughs> I give up. And are they? Yeah, they're bendy. They're bendy action figures, so they are action figures. That's neat. I'm going to look and see if they actually made these. Because, you know, um, sometimes in these catalogs you come across toys that never made it past the prototype stage. Scarecrow car Target game is kind of cool, too. And we're going into play sets and play cases, it says, is the next category. Do you remember these? They're cutouts. They're like paper doll sets. That's for Sesame Street. Three different. And it looks like a little sidewalk scene with cutout paper dolls. More Sesame Street merchandising on the next page. Not nearly as exciting, of course, as Evil Knievel, but interesting just the same, I think. I love going through these old catalogs and just looking at stuff that I might have forgotten, or, you know, if I get a new catalog, maybe something I never even knew existed. Turn and Learn Storybooks. and frame tray puzzles, three-dimensional frame tray puzzles it looks like. Let's move along here. Superheroes play sets and again these are cutouts. I'm gonna go ahead and close up on these since they are superhero. That one's got Superman, little paper dolls, Oops. Batman. Here's the box art. Get a good shot of that. It's a Dick Tracy set too. And it is pictured here. Dick Tracy is next to Batman. Right there. Very interesting. And then the Cape Cod House. It has little plastic people. That's kind of neat, actually. It looks like a vinyl house as a carrying case. That's kind of a neat little toy. Cape Cod and regular dollhouse. can I say folks I love toys I really like looking at these catalogs that's kinda neat the play cases the Cheyenne Fort Cheyenne and the farm It says deluxe farm and this is kinda reminiscent of some of the Marx play sets I think it looks like it's plastic and vinyl and it's got all the little western characters one of my grails something that I've been looking for complete for some years is the Sears Western playset. Had it as a child. Someone gave it to me when I was very young, like five years old. I think it was my father. I'm not sure. But I always wanted to get it back and I, I see it on eBay but it's never complete. And There's the farm playset. Of course I'd have to look at a Sears catalog to show you that. I have to see if I have one and do that in another day. Play houses. Remember when kids used to play in forts? That's kind of neat, actually. I wonder what the material is. It says vinyl and board. Vinyl and board construction. Raggedy Ann and Andy's house. 
just a picture of the kids on the boxes there. Moving right along. Oops, see, that one came apart. This is just uh, the game's intro page. That was dog-eared for some reason. Games, Snap Bowling. That looks cool. Snap Bowling. You use a... Oh, it's an elastic with a, a wooden ball that hits a metal ball that crashes into the pins. And you know, these kind of games, most old board games and other types of games like this, they don't go for a whole heck of a lot. Unless it's something really unique or character related. That says Quick Flip Volleyball. Old games don't really sell for a whole heck of a lot. So if that was something you wanted to get into, it wouldn't be too much. And that says Blast. Blast. I don't know how you play that. I've never seen that game in real life. Fingerball. <laughs> so your fingers are like the little soccer players. They got like little shoes on their fingers. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. There's the box art for you. And then over here we've got Top It. Top It. And I guess these are spring loaded and you flip it to try to toss the marbles into the different slots. Probably about halfway through the catalog now. Bing Bang Bong. That looks very confusing. It says roll the little bingle balls down the bingle flinger and crazy things will happen. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of neat. If you can get it to work right, that'd probably be a lot of fun for a little kid. And over here, Snap Judgment and Battle Board. Snap Judgment and Battle Board. Anybody seeing any games that they remember from childhood here? Did you ever have this or play with this thing? I do not remember these games growing up. More games. Upset, which looks like a beanbag toss and Mark III, kind of a tic-tac thing there, tic-tac-toe. And on the other side, Crossfire and Rebound. Now, Crossfire looks familiar. Crossfire looks familiar to me, where you're supposed to shoot the little marbles, and then Rebound. More games, Criss Cross and Racing Tops. Again, anybody recognize these? Hey, did you ever play these as a kid or have this game? Racing Tops. And then Pop, Fly, and Payoff on the next page. There's another beanbag tossing game there, Pop, Fly and pay off, I'm not sure. I guess you roll mar marbles across the floor into into here and try to hit the little plungers. Let me close that up for you. There's some really odd games. Makes me want to start collecting games. I never really collected board games. Boss and Auctioneer. Boss? Something like Payday, maybe? And then the Auctioneer. <laughs> That's kind of neat. It's got the little hammer guy. And over here, you got Trap and Slap Happy. There's Trap. And then Slap happy.
Toss Across and Mousetrap. Now those two I really recognize. Let me back this up a little bit here. Toss Across and Mousetrap. Do they still make Mousetrap? Somebody has uh, the rights to some of these games because I know Toss Across has been done for years and years and so is Mousetrap. And then over here some other oddballs. There's Smell and Tell and Hang on Harvey. And the smell and tell is interesting because they're scratch and sniff. Do you remember scratch and sniff? They don't do that anymore, do they? But it's a scratch and sniff game and you're supposed to figure out what it is. Hang on, Harvey, Plunk, I've seen Plunk before, and then Radar Search. Looks pretty cool actually, Radar Search. Move along here. Hands down and tip it. Hands down looks familiar. Battling tops and open sesame. The open sesame there looks like it would be cool to have, actually. Although I would use it with like three and three quarter inch GI Joes or something. <laughs> and then sure shot basketball and sure shot baseball like handheld kind of little games there and then sure shot hockey and assorted Sunday funnies games looks like just basic board games if you will there's a close-up of the box art on the other ones there See, we're on page 53. Moving right along. We should almost be out of the games here. Yep. And it says special products. Special products. Make and show slides and make and show slides with quick view projector. And there was a lot of give and show uh, type of stuff being made in this time period too and I guess with this one you cut a picture out and there's you see he's got it submerging in a dish of fluid you must be able to make your own slide from a picture and then show it on a projector instead of being provided with slides like from Kenner or something like that and then you you do it yourself and that's interesting. You remember when we used to have project toys like that? They don't do that anymore, do they? You see it in specialty stores and around Christmas, but nobody buys them. That stuff ends up in Goodwill. Ice cream maker and pie maker. Oh, man, now you're talking. A freaking pie maker. I bet it tastes awful. <laughs> you're just having flashbacks of the Easy Bake Oven there. That stuff was never really very good because, you know, they had to make it super simple. But that's cool for little kids. I think so. In a minute, cake maker. And cake maker party set. and Blah, 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 this and that. It must be on the same principle as the Easy Bake Oven. Now this is interesting. And this looks kind of familiar to me, actually. Nature's Window Super Plant. So you get this dome in the kit. And you can grow your own plants which simple botany like that is a great thing to have little kids do. I think so. More Nature's Window products on both pages. Again, I think that's pretty cool. Something that young children should learn to do. I like all this kind of hobby stuff and you know when I was very little I went to Montessori school so that's kind of ingrained in me anyways but I think that that makes for a much more intelligent person when they get older. I'm not trying to brag like I'm that great, but you know, compared to what I'm seeing from young children now, I think it would make a difference if they did more of those hands-on activities. Chrissy, who is a classic doll by Ideal. Here you got Chrissy, and Black Chrissy, which is basically the same exact doll, just cast in a different color plastic. And Velvet, of course. Velvet 
with Beauty Braider, which is this little crown here. Very basic box. In my older days, in the 90s of being a toy dealer, I've gone through a ton of Chrissy dolls. I've had a lot of Ideal dolls that I've sold over the years. They don't go for a whole lot. You know, the what people are willing to pay for Chrissy's and other Ideal dolls, in my opinion, it's gone down over the years. It's not as much as it was in the 90s, but they've always been very popular. It's a it's a pretty doll. You know, it's a it was well done for the time period. And I can see the appeal, especially if you grew up in the 70s. There's the Chrissy's Beauty Parlor. And Talking Chrissy, Talking Velvet, Brandy, and Dinah. Which are some of the lesser known of the Chrissy family right there. There's the boxes. Brandy and Dinah because there was a family. It let's you get a look at the box on that one. Chrissy Beauty Parlor. Hooray! <laughs> it's just a picture of it, but you know. My poor catalog. Chrissy and Velvet Sweet and Lovely Collection. And so basically, this is this is just a series of outfits for the dolls. And I'll just let you soak these in for a minute, those of you who are into ideal dolls. Not going to cheat anybody on the catalog. I do stop on every page. I'm more of an action figure person, but I absolutely appreciate other areas of collecting. And then over on the next page, got a shoe assortment, a hair styling set, velvet fashion tote, a hair dryer, and another fashion tote with accessories. Because you know you could play with Chrissy's hair. Lots more Chrissy. Oh no, this is cinnamon, I'm sorry. That's cinnamon. Velvet's little sister, of course. And this is the hair doodler version. Because you see there is a pull string. And the idea is that when you pull the string it makes her hair curl up like in the picture. Take a look at the box art. And baby Chrissy. You know what's interesting about this one? This is a 1973 catalog, but the imagery on this particular doll feels very 60s to me. Foam Soft Magic Skin Tiny Tears with Rockabye Eyes. There's a lot going on. Tiny Tears. She cries. And you can see the actual, like, tears on the doll there. <laughs> That's what you want. A doll that cries and makes a mess. Thank you. Tiny Tears. It's like telling your little girl, get used to it. You do have to kind of get used to it because it, it takes a... Uh, certain constitution to raise children. A lot of people don't have it. Tiny Tears Cradle, of course. We're almost at the end of the catalog. Tiny Tears Deluxe Trunk. Uh, some of you doll collectors would love to find that still intact. <laughs> and on the next page, Tiny Tears Carry Along Bassinet and travel tote and an assortment of outfits. They don't really show you the outfits, they just show you the packaging. A 
Upsy Daisy, which is a doll that does flips. Get that to hold still there. Looks like they skimped on the shoes there. It's probably so that she can balance when she does the flip. And then did you notice the hands? It's like prosthetic hands. <laughs> oh man. Like creepy hands. And Lazy Daisy is on the next page. Upsy Daisy and Lazy Daisy. And Lazy Daisy... falls over. Basically the doll just kind of topples over after you sit her down and goes to sleep. Lazy doll, lazy design. Now this is cool. I'm getting back into my territory right here. Basically because of their character. Assorted TV favorite hand puppets and you see that's uh, Betty and Archie up there. I think that's supposed to be Betty, right? It doesn't tell you. Yeah, I think that is Betty. I don't think it's uh, Sabrina. And then the Chan Clan, Charlie Chan and the Chan Clan, which was a Hanna-Barbera production. And then, of course, Fat Albert by Filmation. Hand puppets. I would totally get these. They turn up every once in a while. They're pretty rare, especially in the package. But that's up my alley as far as TV character related toys, vintage are concerned. Something I would be interested in. And here's something cool. I don't know if they made these or not. I'm going to have to look this up. It's called Stretchy Pocketbook Dolls. And you see that they have, like, I forget what that type of material is called that sort of a straw with the extension for arms and legs which is kind of a neat idea and it comes in a little purse on a card like that I'm gonna look it up and see if they made those because I don't know if I've ever actually seen one but you know that's not something I normally collect I'm just curious about it because I think that's kind of a unique look it's an interesting concept for a toy Teary Betsy Wetsy dolls. So little cheap Betsy Wetsies basically. With some pretty generic packaging there. And then what's his face dolls? What's his face dolls? And it comes with an assortment of face pieces that you can stick on the doll. Now I'll show you how they come boxed here. And you know it does not say how they attach. It doesn't say how it is that they attach to the face of the dolls. That's kind of neat. It's different. I'm just wondering how you get it to cling. And guys, that's the end of it. That is it. You see my poor dried out glue falling out on this poor catalog. It's taken a beating, but that's it in a nutshell. That is the entire ideal 1973 Toy Fair catalog. Guys, what did you think? Do you see anything in there that you remember having when you were a child? Did you see anything in there that inspired you where you're like, you know what? I remember that, I want to go out and find it again, or I've never seen that before, but that looks pretty cool, I would love to own that, I'm going to go out and look for it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below, are you enjoying the the catalog tours? I hope that you are. The people who have seen them so far, since I started doing them last year, seem to really like it, and I don't mind touring the catalogs for you. I don't mind going through these every once in a while. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you'd like to see more, please do give the video a thumbs up. If you got something out of it, I hope you did. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you knew all that good stuff. 
check out some of the other videos. I do a lot more, obviously, than just cat catalog tours. We do a lot on this channel to reach out to the adult toy community. And we hope you enjoy it. So, all that being said, what more can I say but thanks for watching. And we will see you again soon.